on the floral system. It still hurts you. She's still got pain. But, you know, maybe she did have her manager negotiate the other side. So she wanted both sides of the commission. But, but you don't know. Yeah, she did, guys. Right. You got screwed. Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Present. Here. 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 Notice of this meeting was provided to the Burnersville News, Courier News, and Star Ledger, filed with the municipal clerk and posted on the municipal bulletin board on December 12, 2014. At this point in the meeting, the mayor and the council welcome comments from any member of the public to help facilitate an orderly meeting and permit the opportunity for anyone who wishes to be heard. Speakers shall limit their comments to five minutes. If reading from a prepared statement, please provide a copy, an email copy, to the clerk's office after making your comments so it may be properly reflected in the minutes. Open session. Anybody wishing to be heard? Any items? Mr. Baker? Mr. Be uh, Robert Baker, 69 Hall. They always say it's best to wait 24 hours after you've had a bad incident before you say anything or do anything. I waited five days, and Don has, um, has told me he apologizes for what happened on Alcott Avenue um, last Wednesday night at midnight to 2.30 in the morning. I was at my bathrobe yelling at the guys removing snow. It was not a pretty sight. Um, all the neighbors were upset. Um, I just don't want to see this happen to anybody else in town. You know, we have a noise, a noise ordinance, and um, it was just, you know, I didn't get back to sleep until 3 in the morning. You know, it's a good thing I didn't have to go to work early. Um, I know some people in my neighborhood, you know, were up the rest of the night. So um, I just want the council to know that, you know, something should be done and talking with all the people involved, because I've heard different stories from everybody that have been And I understand that if somebody's house is burning down or they're Crime scene. I'll get woken up, but <clears throat> I could remove snow for two and a half hours, you know, on either side of my house. So this wasn't snow plowing. This was uh, they were you pulling it out of where it had been piled up. Yeah, yeah I mean, yes. Yeah, no, as you know, because I let kids. I don't mind kids parking in front of my house. They park on both sides of Alcott Avenue, and the snow was in, and it was a one-lane road, and it was dangerous, you know. So. Probably in my hindsight, we probably should have made parking only on one side that time. That would be my suggestion until we can do away with it. But, you know, coming out at 8 o'clock at night, I can stand in the middle of Alcott Avenue and I'm not going to get hurt or anything. There's not very little traffic. So it was just, you know, you know, I, I, you know I've talked to John. He explains what happened. And it's just that, you know, all the neighbors are very upset. I'm the only one who actually ventured out this evening, but I have to come for another matter. So <laughs> just let you guys know, I mean, as polite as I can, but, you know, at, at, I, called, I called the police department and they sent somebody out. I talked to them and I explained that they couldn't stop and all that kind of thing. So it's just, it was a, a very bad, bad, bad evening. So we apologize and we'll, we thank you for coming out and bringing it to our attention. Um, um, and we'll uh, move forward to improve. Right, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, anybody else wishing to be heard in the open session? If none, I'll close the open session. Um, we have presentations. Um, Mrs. Ford, you our health officer. Thank you for the opportunity to um, say hello to everyone. And um, I wish you all great success during your term of office. Uh, I have been the health officer for uh, Bernardsville Borough for 22 years. I've been with Bernard's with Bernard's Township for 32, and um, I have to say that I have a great fondness for Bernardsville because that's the first place that I lived when I first moved up here, and I lived on Mine Avenue. And uh, I'm not related to any of the four Jones here in Bernardsville, so wow. I remember my very first day there was this huge garbage truck with my name on it, but uh, no relations. <laughs> So I, it is a privilege to serve the residents of Bernersville Borough. Uh, we know your community very well. We think that we provide the best service at a very reasonable cost. Um, we, you have a very good board of health that meets once a month, that reviews all the work that we do for you. 
And um, I think the, Dr. Friedman, under, their, uh, under, under his uh, guidance, uh, he runs a really wonderful board. I put together a packet of information for you so that you can see just um, a snippet, kind of a, a small visual of what we do. On the left-hand side, I gave you a card, and please feel free anytime. If you'd like to talk to me, um, either go through, you know, you can call me directly, feel free, or go through Ralph or Sandy or Dr. Friedman. So that you know, um, we are 24-7. I have a wonderful working relationship with your uh, chief of police. I'm on your LEPC. Uh, I attend all the meetings, or one of my staff members does. Uh, we have a 24-7 turnaround. I have four people that, if you have an emergency, I'm dispatched through the police department, and we respond to all kinds of things. So, you know, my work in public health is not glamorous work, but it's very important work. I like to say that um, I'm like an insurance policy. I'm there for you when you need me. But we also do a lot of things behind the scenes that protect the, the health of the public. For instance, we do immunizations for children. We do a lot of surveillance work and monitoring. So with the Ebola crisis, we have done some surveillance work. We also um, follow all communicable diseases. We make sure all your restaurants are inspected every year so that you're not going to hear about that you know, foodborne outbreak because we are there making sure that temperatures are kept at the right temperatures and places are kept clean. And if someone is operating without a license, we make sure that we find them. We always get them. <laughs> um, we also work in uh, cooperation with the visiting nurses of Somerset Hills. They are our clinical staff. So those nurses are the ones that do our flu shots for us, or um, they'll, follow, they'll monitor uh, uh, maybe blood pressures, things of that nature. They do our annual health screening. And um, you know some of the work that I have done for um, Bernie Silver, just to give you an idea, that have been maybe of interest is, for instance, uh, you have lots of bats here. So rabies and bats are you know, something that we see synonymously sometimes. Sometimes it's a positive result in rabies, sometimes not. But we would follow uh, making sure that that is, if we can get it to have been tested, then we monitor the family and help them uh, along with the, the proper uh, treatment that they may need. In addition to that, for instance, uh, we've had elevated lead case, and we've had to follow a child with that. Um, also, you know, there's an elderly shut-in. You have an older community. So Burners Who Burr is the type of community that while you do a lot of work in terms of collecting fees for septics and wells and uh, food establishments, you also have a very mature community. And with the mature community, you have, you have complaints. You have issues that we come out and take care of for you. So in your packet, you can see, I think, I don't want to belabor anything, but you can see that, you know, I have given you what the Board of Health does, also my staff, uh, also the types of work and things that we do for you, as well as some of the preventative services, such as annual health screening. Um, we do a monthly child health conference for the babies, for immunizations. Uh, you know, we have a really big problem with measles lately. You've seen it in the news. And we do all the audits of every single school. I'm talking fast. <laughs> um, but, you know, so I... just kick it under the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I mean, truly, I love my public health work. I, you know, I go to work every day. I'm happy because I love what I do. And um, as a result, you know, we do our very best all the time. But if you don't like something I do, you have to tell me. And I, we always tr strive to really um, do a better job every single day. Uh, you know, I, I also put in there a, just kind of an overview of the work we do as the last year so you can get a sense of, you know, how many septics, uh, wells, you know, you have a lot of older properties, so therefore you're going to have some septics that fail or that need a repair done. And we have that in-house expertise for review plans and we know all the engineers and we try to work with them to make sure that the homeowners are protected or really the eyes and ears of the community. So that was fast. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any questions of me? How often do you recommend this, um, someone with a well get it water tested? I, you know, it, it really, it, um, if you've just moved into the home, of course you should have it done, but I would say uh, every couple of years. Keep it in um, sequence with, if you have a septic, do you have a septic as well? Because the septic wells are... I'm not asking just from you, but I do have, I do have a well, yeah. but some of the residents have asked about does the county have a program? I know we had, when we did the, what was it last year? We did the, the, green, uh, team. the green team. Yeah, yeah last right. Last year with the Raritan Valley. Um, right. Yeah. When we did the electronics thing, it was they had these little kits. Is that something that, that you well, folks we don't, provide? We, can, we do not do any kind of water testing or monitoring, but we do have uh, 
good relationships with some uh, certified laboratories that would actually come out and take a good sample from uh, that well, because really that's what you want. And then they're certified enough to give you the advice as to the type of treatment that if you need uh, certain ultraviolet or any other kind of treatment, they'd be willing to do that. But I think the first and most important is to get a baseline on what kind of well you have and, and what the readings are for that well. And then, you know, if you have a good working septic system, your neighbors around you, then every year is not necessary, you know. But uh, it's one of those things that I think you really, it's almost house to house to really evaluate. So that list of the independent labs is available? If it's Absolutely, yeah. Okay. It's actually on our website as well. If you it's would on like the website? It. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank but you. I'm happy to help if you need anything, you know, in addition. Very good. Great. Any other questions, anyone? Yep. Um, I came from a community that was uh, very vigilant. We probably have built into it, I'm sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, when he was running things, he uh, used to do um, restaurant and food service establishments more than once a year, um, especially in the summer. Actually, we, we pulled back. I think we were doing everyone for a while, but because of the cost and everything else, we pulled it back in the summer because that's when we usually had the bad readings because that's when it's hot. And you know, something like that would be great for an hour. It mm -hmm. matters a lot more in the summer. Yes. Is that something, if we, is advisable or any thoughts on that? Well, you know, we know your restaurants. We yeah. know those yeah. restaurants that are high-risk restaurants that should be inspected twice a year, and if need be, we do that. All the schools are inspected twice a year. Some of the high-risk ones we will inspect twice a year if need be. Now, our new food code has put a lot of new um, regulations in there for, for having people who have, um, that are um, certified for HACCP and other things that make those restaurants uh, I would say more professional mm -hmm. and, and the ability to do a better job. So a lot of that self-monitoring is in place for us. So just to, to spend the time unless we get a complaint. If we get a complaint, we will definitely go in and evaluate because a lot of people will say, oh, I got sick. And it's really, you know, how do you prove that you get sick unless you have a sample done? It, it could be that they ate something maybe that was just not agreeable with them or they were going to get sick anyway. So my, to answer your question, I would say that if there is a uh, high-risk restaurant, certain ones mm -hmm. are more than others. Um, we would do it a, a second one, but I wouldn't say across the board it would be, would be necessary. Okay. That's on your thoughts on that one. Mm. Um, and we used to have something that's sort of like public assistance. I don't know what we have that here. Like this is uh, social services, you mean? Yeah. Um, you know, somebody that a shut-in mm -hmm. or yeah. someone who wasn't able to get themselves, whatever it is, it mm -hmm. the attention to get to the police or a neighbor or whatever it is. Adult Protective Services. And the police do some calling, I believe. They have a program where they check on shut-ins. But it's not, it's not done through. Well, no, but I, I work in... I work in coordination with your police department, so if there is someone of high mm -hmm. that's out there that needs some assistance, I might be called in just to take a look, make sure they have running water, make sure they have heat, call Adult Protective Services. You know, anytime you get involved in a situation like that, that individual becomes a ward of this town. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful when you displace anyone or oh, you know, yeah. how far you go with these things. But yes, we're involved because we're, you know, we're, we are very concerned and we do want to help our residents. Yeah, we uh, <clears throat> did have an archive in our neighboring town that you know, someone died there. Yeah, there are a lot of <clears throat> elderly people that have lived here a long time that might need uh, okay. some assistance. Um, um, and then the last thing, I know that you're probably doing lots of education. You're also doing things on, like, um, you know, the, some of the municipal things like limes and stuff like that um, periodically. We, we, we do with Lyme diseases, we, we monitor it to see um, if it's true case definition. And, and the problem with Lyme is that um, it's the type of illness that if it doesn't have certain parameters, they don't count it as a case. So you might see very, very low cases of Lyme here because it doesn't meet the Centers for Disease Control's uh, definition of a true case. Mm -hmm. But someone might be treated by you know physician, but maybe doesn't have a rash present, so they won't include it. But we do monitor all the blood tests that come in. Um, we have a uh, a computer program that generates it through the state. Any laboratory tests, if it's positive, it comes to us, and then we, with the nurses, um, do the follow up. 
and Lyme is one of them. Anyone else? Is, is there anything that we're not doing that you think we should be? Um, I don't think so. I mean, it's really, if it, the only suggestion I might have is, you know, if you would like to, let's say, have a fee for certain events that you have, perhaps. And it's really up to the Board of Health, but usually what I do is make a suggestion to them to say, you know, if you have a, um, you know, your farmer's market, for instance, you know, and you would like to charge a fee, it would be a good idea. But it's really like a personal choice to, to make that kind of decision. I mean, like um, <clears throat> a street fair where there are food vendors coming? Yes. Kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time you do it for that, but I think your one, your farmer's market might be the only one that you choose not to uh, charge for those vendors, but that's... Uh, but other than that, we follow, see, everything we do is, um, is the public health practice standards for local boards of health. We don't pick and choose uh, what services we provide. It's all state mandated. And so we do really follow all the guidelines. And then there are very specific ordinances that your board of health has the, uh, the right to pass certain ordinances and set certain fees. So it's really up to them to decide what they want to do. And of course, if you, know, if you have a suggestion, it's, you know, it's really um, the, the type of thing that the board works along with you. Um, you are funding that board to provide the services. One last question. Uh, the um, flu shots, and you do the rabies clinic too, I think it? We do the rabies clinic, yes, uh, and the flu shots, yes. Is it possible to ever have them done in the borough? <laughs> the borough? Well, yeah, you can have it, but you know, it's very expensive to, to have certain things. Uh, you know, sometimes the, for instance, if you did a rabies clinic, that, that veteran, uh, excuse me, veterinarian might charge you $500 for the clinic. Unless you have, let's say, someone who maybe you know would be willing to do it for no cost, then we'd gladly be able to offer one. But we find a lot of people come right, you know, to Baskin Ridge. It's really it's advertised here. It's advertised. So board and board, our residents go to them. Mm -hmm. We have a good turnout from Bernardsville residents coming to, you know, Bernard's Township. Yeah, 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 and flu shots, shots and so. <laughs> But I am always happy to, you know, offer something here in town if you would like it. We do some educational programs in your library, and um, I'm always willing to, to do something different if you'd like. All right. Anyone else? I want to thank you, Ms. Fortune, for all the work you're doing in the thank community. Thank you. So much. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. much. It's my pleasure. Fortunate to have you. Safe home. Okay. Items of business. Um, ordinances. Um, ordinance 15-1680 requiring public notice for appeals from determinations of administrative officers and requests for interpretation filed with the Zoning Board of Adjustment and amending Article 4 of the Borough Land Development Code entitled Provisions applicable to both the Planning Board and Board of Adjustment. Um, be introduced by title, pass on first reading and published according to law, and that a public hearing be scheduled for a meeting beginning 7 p.m. February 23rd, 2015. Accept um, the motion to move. Move. Second. Moved by Mr. Schmidt. Second by Council Member Wade. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes passed. All right, resolutions. We have resolutions 15-43 through 1552. Um, does any council member want to pull any of these resolutions for further discussion or comments? None to be pulled. I'll entertain a motion um, to approve resolutions 1543 to 1552. I'll move. Moved by Councilman Youngblood. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Waite. Roll call, please. Bernbaum? Yes. 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 Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Youngblood? Yes. Okay, further items. I have items. one question. Yes, really, it sort of pertains to the, um, the recycling thing. This came up in our green team. Um, apparently, we are we charge. I would like just a little more information, maybe Ralph. We charge um, the businesses in town to recycle, and the green team was wondering how much, you know, how many of our local vendors actually recycle. Couldn't tell you at this point, but I'll check. 
I was just wondering, based since the recycling came up as an authorization for a resolution. The county, as you know, does the recycling. I know that. So, Okay. It, it is um, kind of practice that the commercial establishments, uh, since they're not taxpayers, are frequently, or, or may not be taxpayers, but the commercial establishments. Somehow, whether they're a taxpayer, whether they're a <coughs> landlord, or. <coughs> well, maybe that's not the reason, but traditionally, um, in any municipality, you find that the, um, the commercial establishments generate more stuff typically than the residents, and they uh, have to hire their own uh, waste, uh, you know, trash holders and recycling and everything else. Right. Well, There's no yeah. reason I can't look at it. I'm just telling you that there, typically that's how There it's may going. be a difference between the amount of recycling that a ShopRite has versus Master's shoes. Um, I, it's just, you know, as we were looking at ways to um, continue to make this town an attractive place to live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that we were sort of discussing the other night was just the fact that businesses are not, you know, we don't know how many businesses actually recycle um, because they are separately charged. Good question. Uh, the other thing is, is um, if they recycle more, usually their trash volume is Well, that's down. the other side of the seesaw that yeah. we were discussing. We were going to talk. We've already been to it. Okay. It, it's, the, the goal of the green team was to try to move to do this in the right. Like, like in Cherry Hill, it's a very good recycler, and they've proven that if the business pays uh, for waste water, the waste goes down, the recycling goes up. But we're, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Doing that in Burnsville is very challenging, as you can imagine, our businesses are, they can't put out barrels. Kings Plaza, ShopRite, Main Street, Burners, but it's very difficult. So we're trying to, we reached out to the county and we, we wanted to talk to them how do other Somerset County towns do it. So if anybody knows anything, I can any information from anybody, I'd appreciate it. We're, we're just now in this get information gathering to talk to you. I, I get you. Any further on that? I don't move the agenda. We have a um, 5C. We have a request from Mr. O'Neill of one dogwood court for the installation of a generator. Um, I had spoke with Jack about this earlier. And Jack, you want to fill us in? Yes, that has to be done. The council has no objection to it. And if it's in a place in the easement where it really wouldn't interfere with the various uses of the easement, what I've done in the past is require the property owner just to record a new easement deed. We conveying the easement to the borough and recognizing that there is an intrusion into it and saying that if the borough has to be in there, the borough has the right to, to move the generator or whatever it is that's causing the problem. You know, usually it's not a problem. The easements are usually much wider than what they're needed for. And this is going to be close to the house. Mr. Schoenner, would you like to say anything on, on the matter? Um, the only thing I'd like to say is the... Yes, yes please. The generator is essentially five foot off the property line. That's where it will be. So there's probably enough room to get in there to dig if need be. And the generator is on a flex line. So if you need to move it, and connect it, and just move it to the side. And then there's another 15 feet from my property line to my neighbors. And I have a fence in the backyard. So if something happens, they're going to yank the fence out anyway. And essentially, there's no place else in my property to put this generator. I have easements on three sides. And there's the only other places in front of the house. And I'm not going to put it in front of the house. <laughs> you make a we don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue really is the fact that uh, it's not an intrusion with your neighbor. It's the fact that it's on our, we, we have an easement there. Uh, yeah, supposedly there's a sewer easement that goes yeah. to the, between the two houses to the next street. Mm -hmm. Why they put it there? And when we closed, nobody ever explained that to us. We knew the easement in the back, where there was a uh, sewer line. But I never knew there was one in between the two houses. Is there an actual pipe there, or is just the easement exists that's not been... Uh... I don't know. It's either storm or sanitary. And like you said, it's usually not a problem. Um, I, I, 
I don't know if there's anything that could be, or is it appropriate, Jack, to indicate that uh, it looks on the server should, here. Should it generate it's a hundred thousand that is sure. done on the part of the property owner rather than the borough? Yeah, it says, the deed essentially says that the property owner does it is, is on risk and that it doesn't. Right, so if we have to go in and dig it up, you know, we got to move it, we got to move it. And chances are it will never happen. Right, right. that's right. I think chances are several, because there's a manhole directly in the street. It's a Now, the, it's a natural gas generator? Yes. Where is the natural gas line? Right on this side. Okay, so that's it's not in the easement. The gas line's on your property. On my property, okay. and we've got a couple boxes. Okay, right good. So that is the, in the back of the house, I have the deck and the patio, and there's just Okay. Room. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any other concerns? No? All right. So it's okay. I'll so. prepare the deed for it. That'll be fine. Yeah. Yes. Thank so you. Basically, I'll be responsible for picking up the cost of the SPU. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yes. Just as a point of information, do we have any um, guidelines on like noise? You know, how much you know, the noise and how close it is to something else? I don't know. I'm aware of other than in general. Because I know there's three or four in the development now. That was yeah. Hooked up. Yeah. And this the development was built very strange, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually, we won't go there. Usually, they just need to go through the construction office and ask the owner, but this one got held up because of the yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah, I got to come Okay, so then you just post it. Yeah. And then I just sign it over. Yeah. We don't have to do anything more. Like that. I, I think you are approved. Yeah. We need to approve. approve. Right. Okay. Next meeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So Isn't it generally observed also yeah, that generally in, in times of uh, emergency such as, you know, hurricanes and things, we pretty much would overlook the noise ordinance with everyone's generators. Sure. Yeah. So I don't think it's a concern. All right, we have a um, 5D, a request from RBA Group, which is an engineering firm, um, regarding the rates. Um, we also have a number of other rates attached. Um, None of those, um, we have sent out contracts to all of those firms. They have not been signed and returned yet, but those are the fee schedules that were either on file from last year, so we use them, um, or a new schedule if it's a new firm. So I put them all in there just as comparisons for you. But, okay. um, well, I mean, they sort of doubled the number of uh, categories that they had to charge mm -hmm. for, so it was a little hard to compare yeah, last exactly. year's to this year's, but on some of the stuff that I could well, match, yeah. it's fairly, I mean, they sort of, the cover letter said it was nominal, and I'm looking at some of those numbers and going, if that's their right. definition of nominal. And you also don't know who's going to work on whatever project it comes up, you know, so you don't know which rate you'll be dealt at. Mm -hmm. And as you know, some of our firms have just a few rates, you know, Fun. six to ten, and the other firms have, must have two pages, yeah. <laughs> yeah. different Full. rates, so it's, I don't know, it's difficult to compare, but I just put it in there so you had something to look no, at. No, I mean, it was sort of interesting mm -hmm. trying to flip between the all of them and figure mm -hmm. out who would do what and what would be the various costs. And I thought you should see what we're currently paying our current engineering. Firm. Which is good, yes. But, I mean, would Ferrero, if we go back, I mean, it sort of opens a door, which we've talked about before, about getting some other competitive, using some other people competitively, because Ferrero looked to me like they're trying to price themselves well, on the yeah, upper end of the market. some of the lower rates. Well, it depends on who they're using. Well, it does. But if you compare the highest rates, they were among the lower mm -hmm. Now, we don't, and obviously they're making the decision about who's doing that work. That's, that's not something that we, okay. And you also don't know if you're even going to have any, although we do use RBA, don't we? We have used them several mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. My understanding has been several years since they've had a rate increase. Yeah. It wasn't just from That's exactly right. Some, some of our firms have been renewed year to year. Who's this guy? You know this one? LJM. But we also haven't given them any project. So, um, I don't know. We may see some appeals like this from some of the others because I don't have the others back yet. Well, in, in terms of most of most of our work is projects that are estimated, or when do we use the 
the, uh, the RBA group's been used for the uh, very used for the Claremont uh, bridge and steps, down the Claremont field. They can use them uh, with the traffic engineers on the Mullins Lane and the Old Army. Uh, but are these strictly defined projects, or are they just based on, you know, time and... No, it's, it's specific projects that were chosen. Yeah, that's a good point. I think in the past when we used outside engineering firms and students for a specific project and the council obtained a specific quote right. or proposal for that project. So it's not just an open ended Yeah, I mean I'm not just exactly. doing random things and except emergencies or something like that. There'll be an offset amount on whatever project it was to build at the applicable rates. So we're still one way or the other, no matter how they decide to charge an internal, we're still uh, more or less in, in command of the Correct. All right, so you want to um, look this over, bring it back to committee maybe? Well, I, I'm not sure we have. Work, I mean, this is just information. Or you just want right? to just look at information, information only. Yeah. They're just notifying us that, you know, yeah. the, the rates we they had on file with us. Right. Uh, we're square. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're a little right. old, so. Right. And again, it'll be project specific, so we'll have, that, and we'll have a quote before we even go into the And in some right. cases, a project may be bid out, so yes. it could be different. It depends yeah. on what but the project, yeah. when the project is bid out, it's the engineering can be bid out. I think a lot of times things like this are done by a company that, sort of make the math easy, if someone bids something in January and you don't award it until August, they're trying to tell you now that, hey, those rates are not good forever and we're going to be changing our rates. Yeah. Well, when they called, I just told them that I couldn't just exchange the rate schedule, that you would have to approve it. So okay. There it is. If it's all right with you, we'll insert this in the new contract. Okay. I think unless they're in line for a new award, I don't think it's even applicable right now. Unless they're in line for an, a current award, it's not even applicable, right, mm -hmm. John? Mm -hmm. All right, so do you need a vote on that or anything, Sandy, or just are you going to put it in? I think that's just an FYI. No, as I say, no, I think okay. if they're retained for a project, they'll vote on that. Separately. Right. I don't think we that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It'll be reflected in the minutes. Fine. Agree, okay, 5E, smoking and burrow vehicles. Um, Jack did some research on this. We have um, samples from Seaside Park, Princeton, Woodridge. Um. It, it just came to me from Ralph asking what we could do. Uh, so that was my response. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm nice surprised people prepared. were smoking in here. Yes. Do you want to just tell us, you know, what's well, all these there, there has been some people smoking in vehicles and the others are. Not happy with it, so they wanted okay. to know what could be done about it. So. Okay, so yeah. prepare a barrel ordinance. Yeah. yeah, we'll prepare an ordinance, yeah. Okay. It's okay. Should, but, yeah, the, the vehicle should almost be uh, part of considered a part of the yeah, borough facility. Of the borough. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, I thought that there was something in place, but in checking with Jack, we, we did not. So, so we'll include everything in the ordinance. So we'll include all the yeah, facilities. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. whether it be a vehicle or a building, right. right. Dump the yeah. landfill, yeah. the landfill facility. The landfill facility. Any borough property, I guess. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. yeah agreed. Yeah. All right, um, five F year management. Um, as I said in my email to everybody, this came out of the green team meeting on Thursday night, um, and um, the green team, Bob, you know, we're hoping to get the borough's blessings to to have some communication with both Bedminster, who was all over the newspaper uh, last Thursday on deer management, as well as Basking Ridge. You know, Bob has had several conversations. They had some um, sessions with larger landowners in town. Um, obviously, we have a little bit of a problem, and the deer don't understand that there's a border between Burnersville and Bedminster, or Burnersville and Basking Ridge. And, you know, it's the type of thing that really should be a regional approach. So this is just really authorizing or giving the blessing to Bob and the green team to uh, have some discussions on deer management. 
I think that's that's the way to go, in my opinion. Anybody else? And what? it wouldn't be just necessarily Bedminster mm -hmm. and Baskin Ridge. Mm -hmm. you know, Mendham, town, Harding, uh, Peapack, Gladstone. Right. The neighboring towns, all I'm asking is, I would reach out to them and see if anybody's interested in what share of service. And then if anybody is, sit down with them to work up something where they would help us. And then I would bring a proposal back. If you get one, I'm not guaranteeing we're going to get one. Sort of like, sort of like the Board of Health, you know. Come back with you. I'm, I'm going to target June. So, you know, because if we're going to do anything for the fall season, we've got to have something done over the summer. What's the thought, though? What's the thought? What's the mean of, are we trying to get rid of them over there? Is that where? Uh, potentially oh, well, continuing to cull or culling the herd other than through car accidents? On personal, on property, you mean? It would probably be on larger landowners. To find larger. Property. That would have to be part of the discussion. Could but, be to own property. Okay. And it would have to be on, you know, dates. All of that is to be advised. <clears throat> Just as far as I know, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, it's illegal to discharge a weapon within the borough. You know, uh, well, they do have hunting permits, so they should. <laughs> <laughs> you can almost wrestle them to the ground on my property. You don't even need a gun. It's like a petting zoo. You know? well, we're going to use clubs. Yeah. Be, um, so at this point, the borough doesn't have any standing policy about deer management. Okay, so this is this is going no. like grassroots to sort of just come just up with a Just initiating okay. a general discussion. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just didn't understand where this was going. I didn't. Well, the best way to um, stand outside. Yeah. Um, the, the green team has, has been working on human management for three years now. We started with a lot of education sessions at the library. We did a survey to all the town. Um, we did a laboratory study on a large landowners. We planted saplings and measured deer browns to see what it is. And um, we've we've taken it as far as, as far as we can. I mean, we're a volunteer group. We don't have any more resources. We're a small group. But Baskin Ridge has been doing this for 10 years, and Harding Township has been doing it for a long time. And they dropped the deer population almost in half. They dropped car accidents almost in half. Lyme disease down, but the deer, like Janet said, don't know where the boundaries are. So the National Park Service, we just found out, is finally going to do something on their land because the Audubon has hunting on their land. Um, anybody on with five acres, you can you can shoot most most deer hunting. I found out is by bow and arrow. The majority of, of deer is, is caught by bow and arrow. So 150 feet from a home is up here for bow and arrow. It's 400 and 450 feet for for a firearm. So since other towns are doing a better job than we are, and we're kind of a hole in the donut, we think now we're at the point now, let's reach out to these other towns and see if they're interested. Because it's in their interest too, because the deal are crossing, crossing the border. And if we can find somebody who's willing, like uh, Perners Township is, is has a huge amount of land, and, they, and, and they're doing the best job around it, from what I can say. But Harding is doing great, and, and Bedminster's not going to have a have a hunt on their on their public land. You can do that too. That takes a little more work. But what we're encouraging is large landowners to know how to find qualified hunters to come in and help get rid of, of the does. We want to get rid of the does, not not the buck. You know, a lot of hunters want want the antlers. We want to get rid of more does and, and get the population down to a reasonable point. That's all we're trying to do. Um, so we're asking your permission so Ed and I and, and we can sit down with the <coughs> towns and kind of see if they can help. If they all say no, at least we try. Yes. Bob, have you worked with the state at all and to determine how many deer need to be culled from the from the we, from the, we, we, we the state we've had state fish and wild wildlife right, right, people yeah. and um, they're willing to help, you know, they're helping, but again, we have to do the work. Right, right, right. And that's the problem, and, you know, they can only, they help with the permitting, they do education, they do... So they are assisting you guys, yeah. if you ask. And all the hunters have to have a liability insurance if, if they belong to the sportsman club. If they, if they join the sportsman's club, you get, as a membership, you get liability insurance. So there's all these good things. And there's a lot of hunters around who, are, who hunt in Burnersville, but not as much as in Baskin Ridge and in other towns around us. They do a good job up in Mendham too. So, because um, 
It's just the deer, the deer across the mountain. And, um, What's the information for that sportsman's club? Just so I can make a note. Sorry? Federation, New Jersey Federation of Sports. I mean, if you go to their website, you can find their contact. It's but crazy. if you if you belong to them, you can you get the liability insurance. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know about this? Yeah. Okay. So this, <coughs> actually, um, you're not supposed to discharge your right, but I think you can get permission if I remember reading the ordinance correctly. Mm -hmm. If you file with the police department, mm -hmm. the land has to have certain size. But this would actually give you opportunity because if you have you know someone that has um, contiguous properties, between the two of them, you may not meet the requirements for distance and safety, but when you know, you're going to be in court, it's great, it's good. Right. It's all kinds of things. So that's all we're asking the council blessing that I don't overstep my bounds talking to the council about. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 5G correspondence, we have none. Um, this part of the meeting will move into a closed session, discuss property acquisition at Bernhardt State and contract negotiation with Mine Mount Easements. Um, council member move to adjourn. I move. Second then. Right. by Mr. Young, Young Brothers, Brothers. Brothers. by Mr. Yeah. Birnbaum. All right, um, Jack or Ralph will be coming out to form any decisions after no. closed All session, right. nothing this evening? No. All right. Thank you very much. And Bob, I'm trying to sort of session. track down where the hang up in the master plan open space oh, is. So I don't know the exact some emails have been circulating there. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm also, there's a rec committee meeting tomorrow night, so if the rec and the open space have to get together, if you were joining the Masters Sportsman's Association, whatever it is, one of the things it does, it has a group of liability insurance, so a lot of these places, I used to go on the and the club itself, people